Alright, got a build update for my League Start Chain DD Necro build. Basically, this is a uh, level 100 final endgame update. I've had this character more or less done in terms of the gear and stuff for like three or four days now. Just been doing some farming, figuring out what I wanted to play next. Figured I'd kind of go over how the character ended up. On League Start, the original plan was to do the uh, kind of traditional Necromancer DD stuff for defense with 4th Vow and uh, the Zabakwa Timeless Jewel mod. Uh, changed up my plans after basically after seeing like T17 content stuff and uh, specifically how spammy and lots of like spammy fizz hits and all this other nonsense was going on in those maps. Um, and went to what I actually had planned early on and then was thinking I wouldn't run which is a uh, Militant Faith Jewel for this uh, Power of Purpose node, which gives you mana converted to armor, and you kind of focus on having more armor and then scaling maximum resistances for your Ellie mitigation, which, compared to the 4th Vow type setups, uh, we get similar elemental mitigation. I'm at 81, 81, 84 max res. Whichever resist I decide to boost, which is the plus 3 max res on my shield, and I can swap it through Harvest, I get, like, Similar or maybe slightly better even elemental defenses situationally than the fourth vow type stuff But I get a uh, much better physical defenses especially against like spammy not as big hits due to just having insane amounts of armor My character's at almost 52,000 armor just sitting in hideout And uh, I can boost the uh, resistances all the way up to 90% on one res at a time I have a white socket here where my grace gem is. I could switch any purity and I wanted if I was doing a boss like, let's say, Uber Shaper where there's just cold damage and we don't really care about grace because you can't evade the slam. Uh, I could put purity of ice in there and have my shield be cold res and I can get up to 90% cold res. Which still isn't the greatest against Uber bosses in particular because they tend to have things like pen. So max res scaling in general just isn't the greatest against them. But for... Uh, what I wanted to plan it for, which is just farming a lot of T17s, which is what I have done. Works really well. Um, other than that stuff, uh, new changes kind of was the Spectre situation. There's a lot of new Spectres with higher HP counts in T17 maps. And that combined with the new Wraith Lord helmet, you can actually summon 10 or more Spectres at a time. You can only end up adding 10 your desecrate pool but basically instead of having like five or six specters with about 360 percent health each we have 10 specters that average out over 400 percent life each which uh i don't know the exact numbers on how much damage you gain but it's quite substantial we have a lot of really high health specter corpses just getting summoned all the time through the desecrate um and other than that some other smaller changes that i did Versus what I had planned League Start. Um, I dropped Brian King Pantheon in favor of Solaris. Which is just like way better defensively. But to do so I needed to deal with stuns and freeze and chill. So we've got freeze and chill immunity on boots. As well as 44% uh, stun avoid on boots. And then I get the rest of the stun avoid from this abyss jewel. And then one more abyss jewel on my tree. So we have 100% stun avoid. Freeze chill immunity. And we got to swap the Pantheon to one that's just I think way better. Um, additionally, we have Parandus Pact, the new unique jewel, instead of Energized Armor, which was originally here. Basically, in this setup in particular, because this build has a lot of nodes in this radius, uh, you get quite a bit more armor than the Energized Armor gives. And since this doesn't convert your ES, you're also gaining back like a decent amount of energy shield on top of it. Very good jewel, and especially in this spot. For a lot of builds that get a decent amount of nodes over here. You can see if I take this out I go from 51.8 thousand armor to 32 thousand. So right now all things adding up together. This jewel's giving me almost 20 thousand armor. Which is ridiculous. It's something like 147 maybe percent increased armor. It's nuts. But uh, aside from that some other stuff that uh kind of changed up is like just necropolis in general we've been able to craft some pretty crazy rare items like i have this double fractured chest with tier one armor evasion and uh tier one fizz reduction i made a couple of tri-res life 
rings with uh, chaos resist on them. I have a double fractured helmet with two fractured life mods. I don't think the gloves were not from Necropolis, neither were the boots. I was just a fractured base, neither was the belt. I tried to make plus two max res shield with Necropolis, which in theory should have been a decent way to do it, but uh, didn't work out. I just ended up getting this with a fracturing orb. But anyway, that's like the whole new setup. Uh, I think that covers all the stuff that's changed. So, let me show you a T17. I I've got a pretty easy one here, I think. Got haste. It's got damage ignites. And uh, that's about it. So I just have to put on this in case a big ignite shows up for ignite immunity. Um, and I've been running some of these now with a bit of scarabs just to juice it up a bit since these tend to have really high quantities and stuff. Without even like doing any magic finding or high investment, these are all really cheap scarabs. Uh, but I wanted to overwrite this mob because it apparently can make your game lag pretty bad. The world shatterer. And then otherwise. Just run it. Um, with how much stuff drops in these, I've actually been running item rarity as well while I clear the mobs. I don't really need intensifying these T17s. They tend to be pretty narrow linear maps, so the increased AoE is less impactful. But um, yeah, so let's just go through it. Probably won't full clear the entire map here. Probably just clear to the boss to show how it goes. Like I said, this one's a relatively easy roll on the map. One thing is, if I was being like extra super safe, I would actually switch my shield. My shield currently has maximum fire res. If I wanted to be extra safe against the boss, I could switch it to maximum lightning because this boss in this map basically just does lightning damage. And a little bit of physical, I believe, but doesn't do any fire. Uh, but the boss is easy enough for me that I don't feel the need to swap it, and max fire is good for the clearing because. If some stray, I don't know, detonate or something of some sort shows up, then the fire res is pretty nice to have. One other thing about the um, max resist setup, which is part of why I wanted to specifically go for this in T17s, is because the Delve Sulfite buff from the Atlas passives gives you maximum resistances each time I pick up a Sulfite node, and like, I'm not at 90 res. In normal gameplay but if I click all three of these nodes now I get another plus three max res and the more max res you have the more value you know each additional point is so being specifically fine-tuned for these t17s it works really well to have the uh, sulfite for extra resists on top of what you're already scaling and then they also give you like damage and speed and it makes clearing maps quick my Alice right now is like kind of a mix between trying to get a bit more loot but also stuff that still is making the maps easier like the soul fight uh, like some shrine stuff the shrine stuff's just really good in general in these maps let's see I'll get to the boss here um, I'm gonna do my swap to more single target damage which I need to move my flame dash to a white socket just because that's where my blood rage is I'm taking out. I'm putting mainly putting Arcanist Brand in for the Desecrate now. And then I'll put Intensify back in instead of the item rarity support. Sometimes there's trash in this. I think it's only when I'm running like Hunted Traders that it sometimes spawns trash. This boss is pretty easy. He only has a few attacks to do damage and basically if each time he attacks you just jump through him to the other side of him. Uh, you'd pretty much avoid it. If, as long as you're tanky enough to tank those beams, because that's the stuff that actually does, like, anything. Alright, but yeah, so that's basically T17 stuff on this character. It goes pretty quickly, pretty smooth. I moved my gems around in the wrong order. There we go. And I'm back to normal. 
And normally I would go clear the rest of the map, but I'm not going to drag this on for too, too long. Get the idea. Uh, build, do good. Build, play good. Build, kill T17 content. Really good so far. I don't know how it would fare in some of the, like, absolutely insane... 300% map effect juicing magic find type stuff that people are doing in T17s. I don't think it's quite tanky enough for that. It might be. Like, my max hits aren't, like, the highest that they can be. But it is still a build that does get armor and evasion. So, you know, not massive fizz hits basically get ignored. We get 50% block, 50% spell block. And we still are running the Defiance of Destiny, which is just critical for any of that crazy content where you're getting swarmed down by 500 enemies or something hitting 20 times a second. Yeah, that's the build. That's my level 100, probably final update of this. And, uh, yeah. As always, POB, all the other stuff that might be needed will be in the description. Thanks for watching.